We are continuing our series on troubleshooting performance issues in WVD deployments. In today's video, we are going to talk about troubleshooting disk performance and its impact on the overall user session performance in WVD. My name is Vadim Vladimirsky and I am the CEO of Nerdio. And if you are an MSP looking to build or grow your Azure practice with WVD, then this is the channel for you. Before we dig into the tools and the specifics, it's important to understand that there are two disks that matter for the performance of a user's virtual desktop session in WVD. The first is the local disk that is attached to the session host VM into which the user is logged in. Now, the performance of this disk is important because a lot of the disk IO temporary files and application binaries are read and written to the C drive of the session host VM. So having a good performing disk will allow applications to load faster and temporary data and page file and things like that to be written faster to the local disk. The other disk that's important in a WVD environment is the storage of the FSLogix profile container, which is typically stored on a separate file server away from the session host VM as a VHD file. And that VHD file is mounted to the session host VM over the network. The performance of that file is really important and it's based on the underlying storage system where that file server is storing that file because much of the user's profile contents are being written to and read from that virtually mounted VHD file over the network and any performance contention with that path to that storage is going to result in slower user performance. The way you troubleshoot disk performance is by using Windows Resource Monitor. If you open that up either through clicking on the link on the Task Manager tab under the Performance tab or by typing in Resmon into the Run box, you can then go to the Disk tab inside of Windows Resource Manager and take a look at the disk queue depth on a per volume basis inside of that VM. What you're looking for here is values that are consistently above one and are spiking, you know, maybe even higher into the teens. If the disk queue length is consistently over one or is spiking a lot into the teens, that's a pretty good indication that there is a disk constraint that's affecting user performance. Keep in mind that looking at the disk queue depth in Resource Monitor running on WVD Session Host VM is going to tell you about how well the local disk is performing on that VM but you're also interested to know how the profile container disk is performing. Therefore, you're going to need to also run the Windows Resource Monitor on the VM that stores the FSLogix profiles and look at the same disk queue depth on the volume where those profiles are shared from. If you do notice that the disk queue depth is high, on either the file server or the session host VM, you can expand the details on the disk tab of the resource monitor and see what process specifically is responsible for that additional activity that's causing the disk queue depth to be high, which can help you narrow down the root cause of the problem. Here are some best practices and recommendations that should help improve disk performance and therefore overall end user performance in WVD. Number one, do not use standard HDD or S-type disks, either for the session host VM OS disk or for the storage where the FSLogix profiles are stored. Those generally have a fairly inconsistent throughput and a low number of IOPS and is likely going to cause discontention and slow user performance. You should consider using at the very least standard SSD or E-type disks or even better premium SSD, certainly for the storage of the FSLogix containers, but also perhaps for the local OS disk of the VM that's running the session host. Another popular option for speeding up disk performance on the session host OS disk is by using the ephemeral OS disk in the session host, which is actually free and it has even faster performance than premium SSD in some cases. If you have Windows Search enabled, every time the user logs in, if a indexed cache database doesn't yet exist, the Windows Search will start building one 
based on the configuration on the session host. Generally, it's going to try to index all of the Outlook data and maybe other personal data the user may have. If you don't have index search roaming properly enabled with FSLogix, this is going to happen each and every time the user logs into a session that's on a session host that they haven't logged into before. And this is going to generate a lot of extra disk IO because of all of the indexing. So be sure to configure search index roaming with FSLogix and have it stored as part of the profile. Also, for the first time when the user opens up Outlook, which is generally configured with cached mode enabled, that OST file is going to get hydrated with all of the mail that's gonna get downloaded from the Exchange Online server. Now, the OST file is by default included in the FSLogix profile, so there's really not much you have to do to make that OST file be persistent from session to session, but you should plan for this hydration process to be very disk IO intensive the first time the user logs into the desktop and opens Outlook and the email starts downloading. Therefore, when you are onboarding a large number of users, be prepared to stage users in groups because if they all log in at the same time for the first time and open up Outlook, all of them are going to start consuming disk resources on the server and the file server where the FSLogix container resides. So be sure to plan for this. And our best recommendation is to pre-stage users and do them in small groups or have them log in in advance to hydrate that OST file, thereby reducing the disk IO load during the first login when the users go live. Streaming services like Spotify and Pandora and YouTube can have a significant impact on disk performance and especially on the FSLogix VHD profile access. If you notice that your file server is reporting high disk queue depth and you narrow it down to a particular user's VHD file, which is their FSLogix profile, you can then jump back to the session host VM and see if that user may be streaming something thereby causing a lot of unnecessary disk activity. It's best to educate the users to do all of their streaming on the local machines. It's not only going to improve their performance, also going to reduce bandwidth costs. And finally, if you are deploying a large WVD environment for many users, hundreds, thousands of tens of thousands, considering the scalability of the file server, the file storage for FSLogix is really important. Each premium SSD disk is limited to a certain amount of throughput and IOPS. And the bigger the disk, the more throughput and IOPS Azure provides for that particular disk type. When you add multiple disks to the same VM, you can create a Windows volume that spans those disks, which is thereby going to spread the IO of FSLogix across multiple P disks that are attached to the VM. That may be a good idea in certain cases, to have multiple disks that the volume is spanned across. Some of the other technology to consider is the scale out file server functionality in Windows, which allows you to spread the IO across multiple file server VMs with one or more premium SSD disks attached to them. You can also use a service called NetApp Files, which is an Azure file storage technology that has different performance tiers and, and it scales very well in this high performance. Using Azure files with premium storage is also an option to consider when storing lots of FSLogix profiles for many different users. And then finally, looking at the Ultra SSD or the U-type disks for storage of FSLogix profiles is also another option to consider. These are some of the common strategies for identifying and alleviating disk-based constraints in Windows Virtual Desktop. For more information about other troubleshooting strategies for performance, click on the link below the video.